Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 15th lecture of the MOOC course on Sociological Perspectives on Modernity. Till now, we have covered three modules, thematic preliminaries, so classic statements about sociological modernism through the works of Karl Marx and Max Weber, then the structuralist interpretation of critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the works of Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser. And it is the fourth module that we are going to discuss in this 15th lecture. We will uh, in, in another two or three lectures we are going to cover this cover this module that 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 society as a human creation. I mean what is what are the views of or what are the views from western Marxist trajectory theoretical trajectory that we will see. I think, I think it is fair to say that there is not an agreed definition of western Marxism. In the same way that the phrase new left uh, can be used to refer to radically different political developments, often depending largely on the speaker's own point of view and whether they treat the uh, a phrase as a compliment or an insult because they will uh, people people will brand them as as uh, as they are deviating from marxism itself or they are deviating from what marx said or they will be insulted that perhaps perhaps uh, they have not understood uh, the writings of marx properly i'm not going to do that I am just trying to look at different theoretical trajectories okay. and in this case, so far as the critical modernist paradigm in sociology are concerned, I am going to discuss the western Marxist theoretical trajectory and its contributions to modernity. Again through the lenses of holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements through the works of three very important prominent thinkers namely Georg Lukacs, Antonio Gramsci and Alan Turin. When I say I think it is fair to say that there is not an agreed definition of western Marxism I mean in the same way that the phrase new left can be used to refer to <coughs> radically different political developments often depending largely on the speaker's own point of view, own perspective and whether they treat the phrase as a compliment or an insult, the phrase western Marxism can be used to refer to very different sets of theories according to one's preferences and purposes, according to one perspective. For the core, for so far as the perspective of this course is concerned, I am going to define western Marxism negatively in terms of approaches which differ significantly from the major forms of Marxism that became institutionalized in the Leninist and social democratic parties of the pre-war period and positively in terms of reworkings of the Marxist tradition which emphasize the activist, humanist and emancipatory elements in his thought. This the it implies uh, I mean I mean this means locating western Marxism in terms of agency rather than structure. In terms of structure we have discussed the works of Levi Strauss and Althusser in the case of structuralist interpretation of modernity. 
but in this case we are going to locate western marxism not in terms of structure but in terms of agency in terms of the conventional distinction or in terms of critique rather than science in uh, in terms of uh, goldner's terminology if you if somebody wants to reach we will address this question later on but this is not the purpose of this course okay that alvin's terminology uh, alvin i mean alvin goldner's terminology in terms of this course we can treat structuralism and western marxism as the opposing developments of different emphasis within classic modernity one element of this can be seen in terms of the concept of determinism when i say this i mean uh, let me go back a little when both marx and weber emphasized the extent to which people's action is determined by their social situation marx's famous phrase for this is human beings make their own history but not under conditions of their own choosing human beings make their own history but they do not make it under the circumstances chosen by themselves okay i mean the tradition of all dead generations weighs like a nightmare on the brains of the living why i uh, i mean uh, i refer to this and i i say that no the structuralism and western marxism are are the opposing developments of different emphases within classic modernism because structuralism emphasizes on 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 structure and um, not agency whereas western marxism emphasizes more on uh, agency not not structure human agency okay okay i mean structuralism develops um the emphasis on the primary role of social relations to argue that the idea of human agency is an illusion that's why structuralist said the, the individual ceases to exist what we know it is not human agency what we actually know is the relational that's why structuralism develops the emphasis on the primary role of social relations to argue that that the idea of agency human agency is an illusion this can be described as a strong determinism or perhaps more clearly as a variant of fatalism a weak determinism would see determination as setting limits and exerting pressures in the western marxist tradition the setting of limits and exerting of pressure on human action is above all the result of the action of other human beings or ourselves in the past this is very important in the in the in the western marxist tradition okay uh, such kind of setting of limits and exerting of pressure on human action is the result of the action of other human beings or of ourselves in the past that's why i said the tradition of all dead generations weighs like a nightmare on the on the brains of the living as as marx wrote putting it succinctly if we take the idea of the determination of human action by social structure as characteristic of classic modernism we could say that structuralism collapses human action back into social structure whereas whereas western marxism tends to collapse social structure back into human action what structuralists argued earlier i mean in the last lectures what we have discussed human agency has no role to play it is a structure which is going to determine our social action i mean uh, i mean human agency okay i mean in in structuralism i mean structuralism collapses human action back into social structure while western marxism tends to collapse social structure back into human action i mean i mean western marxists namely lukacs gramsci and turin they tend to place human action on a higher pedestal or human agency on a higher pedestal vis-a-vis -vis social structure in relation to social structure these are the three i mean in this in this lecture in in this in this module 
uh, I'll be talking about three authors as I have already mentioned Georg Lukacs, Antonio Gramsci and Alain Turin, mainly because I think there is a, uh, a relatively similar logic in their theory. This is not an uh, uh, obligatory uh, uh, definition uh, of course, uh, as Martin J in Marxism and totality for example, includes Althusser in, in his discussion of of Western Marxism, uh, Roger Got Gottlieb's anthology includes socialist feminist authors. Both of these are admittedly slightly unusual choices, but virtually any any definition of um, Western Marxism would also include the authors of the, the Frankfurt School, I mean the critical theory um, namely Theodore Adorno, Max Horkheimer, Eric Fromm, Herbert Marcuse and so on. But I have deliberately avoided them in these lectures, but they have of course, made a substantial contribution in terms of theorizing modernity and rationality in particular. I will be, I'll be talking about Jürgen Habermas for example, he also uh, belongs to uh, the western Marxist school, I mean the, the uh, one of the second generation of the Frankfurt school uh, or, or the critical school and, and uh, you are, you and I mean the participants, I mean you are all of you are welcome to read up on uh, the other critical theorists, if you want to write about them apart from their own writings and books devoted to them, uh, both uh, Martin J uh, um, uh, and, and, um, and Roger uh, Gottlieb, uh, Gottlieb include them. It's, it's, um, it's it's worth spending a couple of minutes uh, uh, on the context that these authors are writing in uh, I, I i always um, why i'm i'm giving you this this prefatory remark on 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 western marxist uh, perspectives on on critical modernism that uh, please don't think that only these three i mean lukacs gramsci and turin only they have contributed to the domain of uh, modernity, but why I am trying to uh, trying to restrict uh, because of because of uh, certain categorical imperatives of this course uh, and and not only that, but also other theorists more or less okay, they can be clubbed here through these through the writings of these three authors that is okay. Lukacs, Gramsci and Turin are important and, and, and all other uh, theorists are important, but I am also trying to look at uh, why I selected all the, the, the only these three not others precisely because how I can examine critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the lenses of these four elements, four critical four central philosophical and foundation uh, philosophical and political foundations of modernity namely holism or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements okay the 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 in this in this sense uh, i'm we are we are going to discuss the 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 contributions made by western marxists namely uh, georg lukacs uh, antonio gramsci and alain turin to to the 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 critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay that's why i, I said it's worth spending a couple of minutes on in, on the context that these authors are, are writing in the relevant writings of lukacs and 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 gramsci the 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 relevant writings of lukacs and gramsci date from the interwar period I mean, when I say interwar period, I mean the period between the first world war and the second world war. So, they, they predate in fact structuralism by a few decades. Lukacs was a Hungarian communist, his most important book for our purposes, I mean history and class consciousness was written after his involvement in the Hungarian revolution of, of 1919 and Gramsci was involved in the workers council movement during the Turin strikes in the in the same period. I mean, uh, Lukacs was from Hungary, Gramsci was from Italy. 
okay. and, and Gramsci's theoretical reputation largely derives from his prison notebooks written in a deliberately ellipt elliptical fashion because of censorship and smuggled out of jail. In fact, uh, Gramsci was uh, uh, jailed uh, in 1925 till 1938 and during the period in jail, he wrote prison notebooks. Both, both uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean in other words, uh, both of them, both Lukacs as well as Gramsci share an experience of practical politics at a level which can be described in terms of the social totality as well as an experience which leads them both to emphasize that social knowledge and social action are not separate forms of life. I mean there was a refusal to separate theory from practice that, that uh, that social knowledge and social action, theory and practice, knowledge and social movements, political movements, they, they are they are inseparable. That is about I mean I mean Lukacs and Gramsci. Okay. When you look at Alain Turin, Alain Turin's life is a bit more prosaic. He is a French sociologist. Okay. But one whose research program has led him to into involvement with a broad range of social movements from investigating the experience of car workers at, at uh, Renault in the 1950s through involvement with the student movement in 1968 in France to research on uh, Allende's Chile and the anti-nuclear movement in France. Okay. Then, then through these three authors, we, we will be able to know the, the, the reflections from, from three countries, Hungary, Italy and France, okay? western Marxist trend. Okay? Then, then what is the commonality that, that we find? There is, there is a common thread of involvement with social movements, okay? because, because in Hungary, okay? Uh, uh, Lukacs was very much involved in Hungarian revolution of 1919. In Italy, Gramsci was very much involved in the workers council movements during the Turin strikes in, the, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in 1919, 20 and so on. Okay. And, and uh, in France, Turin was engaged in uh, Turin was uh, investigating the experience of car workers at Renault in the 1950s. He was also involved with the students movements in 1968 in France. He was also involved in anti-nuclear movements in France. Okay. That is why they were all these three Lukacs, Gramsci and Turin, they were very much involved in social and political movements and there was also a refusal to separate theory from practice. Having made these, these, these prefatory remarks, now let us, now let us see uh, the concept of totality and how western Marxism has, has contributed to, to, uh, to the, the debates on modernity, the debates on critical modernist paradigm in sociology how uh, in, in, in the case of um, I mean what are the, the, uh, uh, the implications so far as reification, alienation, expressive totality and so on are involved in this. Okay. It is very important okay, uh, to know. When I say the concept of totality, I will I'll, I'll just uh, um, uh, let, let us start with western Marxism and structuralism, I am not going to dwell much on structuralism, but I am trying to look at western Marxism as an opposing trend to, to structuralism. Western Marxism of course, uh, shares with structuralism a common emphasis on holism or totality. 
or the concept of totality. This is this is formulated by Lukacs as the all pervasive supremacy of the whole over the parts. I mean social structure is a product of all human actions, all human agencies. In this sense, Lukacs said that that uh, that we must understand the all pervasive supremacy of the whole, I mean the social structure over the parts, namely human action or human agency. In this way, both the major developments of critical modernist paradigm in sociology reject methodological individualism propounded by Weber in favor of a view of the social whole as essentially relational, although as we shall see the content of these relations of course, differs drastically, dramatically. In, in, in each case, in the case of structuralism and in the case of um, western Marxism, it is this relational approach or it is this relationalism that enables us to think of a social whole. An example from the western Marxist tradition would be the concept of, a, of class. This is seen as representing not an individual fact, so that A is a shopkeeper and B is a peasant, but a relation. So, that C stands in a relation of exploitation and domination of D. Okay. This is again different, this is this is this is again uh, different from from what Marx said. Okay. It is, but, but Marx also was very quick uh, and, and incisive enough to, um, to mention uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the role of very, uh, so the role of so many subsidiary and intermediary classes. Okay. Okay. This is, this is uh, uh, and this is how western Marxists uh, studied the notion of class, that that class is seen as representing, then representing what? Not an individual fact, but a relation. As well as this strong relationalism, there is a radical extension of the category of the social. Like structuralism or at least like Althusser structuralism, but unlike the classical modernism of Marx and Weber, western Marxism tends to treat the social as the primary or even the only reality. This is clear in terms of the concept of human nature. The, what is that? Now, the idea of a biologically fixed universally present human nature is rejected as formally by Gramsci as by Althusser and we have seen that Levi-Strauss does not take this approach. Okay. Here again, um, here again the, 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 the substance of I mean the substance of western Marxism's alternative I mean social agency is radically different that different from that of structural age. More broadly the idea of nature as separate from and essentially different to society is rejected. Okay. This is very important. In structuralism, it was not. I mean, uh, structuralism. I mean, uh, social structure, nature. They were more important. Okay, but 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 in in the case of Western Marxism, the the uh, social agency. I mean, the the idea of nature. I will not look at agency now, but the idea of nature as separate from and essentially different to society is rejected. For example, for, for Lukacs, it is effectively unknowable. I mean nature, the idea of nature is unknowable. For Gramsci, nature is something that is effectively completely subordinated to society in the process of production. Similarly, both reject the idea of the unconscious as having an independent and pre-social nature. This is not just a rejection of the idea of the non-social, it is also bound up with a rejection of 
positivistic and scientistic approaches to social reality and, and the insistence that we cannot claim to stand outside of history to be an external observer of a fixed or given reality. When I, uh, I have used the term scientistic, I mean scientistic means sci where everything is reduced to science. Okay? There is a difference between scientific and scientistic. Okay? Okay? Uh, Marx believed, for example, Marx believed in, in scientific studies not scientific studies. Okay. 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 Um, philosophers of science, historians of science, sociologists of science, uh, we always try to study, uh, we always try to uh, make scientific studies not scientific studies. Okay. Okay. That we, we always try to interrogate the idea of, of whatever changes uh, have occurred okay, can be reduced to only scientific explanations. No, we aim at scientific explanation. Okay. We do not believe in uh, a, a reductionist method. Okay. This is, but, but the, the central argument here is that for, for Georg Lukacs, it is nature is effectively unknowable we can know nature only through human action, human agency. For Gramsci, nature is something that is effectively completely subordinated to society in the process of production. I mean, I mean nature is always controlled by human agency. Okay? I mean, earlier notion was that nature controls human beings only know how to contemplate on nature, but Gramsci, but earlier also Marx said this, uh, but Gramsci put it in a different way that human beings not only contemplate on nature, but also know how to control nature. That is how there was a shift from faculty of contemplation to faculty of control. Okay? This then, then, then if I, when I say, uh, I mean when Gramsci says that nature is something that uh, that is effectively completely subordinated to society in the process of production. I mean, there is a difference between Lukacs and Gramsci. Okay? The difference is that for Lukacs, nature is of effectively unknowable, but for Gramsci, nature is knowable, but nature is completely subordinated to society, human agency, human action in the process of production. But then, what is the similarity? The similarity is that both Lukacs and Gramsci reject the idea of the unconscious as having an independent and pre-social nature. This is not, as, as uh, I mean, I, I mean, this is not merely a rejection of positivistic and scientific approaches to social reality, and the insistence that we cannot claim to stand outside of history to be an external observer of a fixed and given reality. If we want to know history, if we want to understand history, if we want to change history, then we must engage ourselves with, with our history, with society, with culture, with economy, with polity and so on. Okay? We cannot um, uh, be an external observer, we cannot be external observers of, of a fixed and given reality, because nothing is fixed or given everything is changing, everything is dynamic. Okay. This, is, this, is, this is very important. Okay. Now, now, I hope now you know the difference between one structuralism and western Marxism okay, and where both Lukacs as well as Gramsci, they share some commonality in the context of the concept of totality or holiji as a, as a central philosophical and political foundation of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. I mean the way both Lukacs as well as Gramsci, they reject the idea of the unconscious as having an independent and pre-social nature. Why? How? If, if such question arises, okay, then this is not 
just a rejection of the idea of the non social it is also bound up with with a rejection of positivistic and and scientistic approaches to to social reality further further both lukacs as well as gramsci okay insisted that that one cannot claim to stand outside of history one cannot afford to be an external observer of a fixed or given reality okay in this sense what we have covered till now is that we have we have discussed the difference i mean in 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 this section on the concept of totality or holism we have discussed the differences between or opposing trends between structuralism on the one hand and western marxism on the other okay uh, and then we have discussed on what count both uh, lukacs as well as gramsci uh, share their opinions okay in the in the context of uh, uh, holism or totality okay we are, we are we are still in 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 holism or totality i mean uh, i mean uh, if we have to uh, look at this uh, i mean um, that we cannot be isolated from from uh, historical contingencies okay for western marxist authors society also is a human creation because they drew upon the works of marx more exactly humanity is nothing but social humanity because humanity i mean human beings uh, are not isolated individuals that's why uh, they they refer to what marx said human beings make their own history but not as as isolated individuals human beings um, uh only appear as human beings in in interaction with one another that's what rousseau also said uh, in social contract theory that uh, man becomes man only among men i mean he he was referring to a human being becomes a human being only among other human beings if you put a human being in 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 a forest then then uh, without having any opportunity to interact with other human beings then that human being will turn out to be an isolated uh, category that human being may interact with only animals or birds will not be able to learn the language will not be able to understand human culture and so on okay that's what rousseau said in uh, said it in i mean uh, in social contract theory i mean what western marxists suggest that uh, that human beings only appear as human beings in interaction with one another that is in social relations of production and these social relations of production nevertheless are not fixed or given they are ever changing so that we ca- we could discuss them in terms of structures which define what appear to be individuals rather they are the results of results of collective creation and social conflicts that's why these social relations of production ultimately are the results of collective creation and social conflict thus whatever appears as 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 natural given or fixed in society is the result of human action but we do not recognize it as such in this context lukacs introduces the term reification okay what what uh, um i mean uh, the term reification um uh, is very close to uh, marx's discussion on alienation where i'll uh, let me give you an example where i say that uh, in in the industrial mode of production human beings turn out to be machines human beings are reduced to machines when they are reduced to machines they alienate from their own labor okay from their own self from their own individuality okay in this sense that that whatever appears to us as natural given or fixed in society 
is the re result of human action, but we do not recognize it as such that I do not recognize the way uh, I in, in generality we do not recognize the way uh, human beings have turned out to be machines. Human beings have uh, have lost their essence, they, they are alienated from their own labor, they are alienated from their own work, they are alienated from their own self, they are alienated from their own individuality, okay? they are alienated from their own creativity. If we do not recognize it as such, Lukacs introduces the term called reification. What is reification? Reification refers to the process where the result of our actions appear where the result of our actions appears to us as a quasi natural thing because we do not recognize its social origins or the processes of creation that uh, which have gone into uh, their formation we do not recognize which appears to us as a quasi natural thing only appearance Quasi means semi-natural thing, partially natural thing, but actually uh, they are not natural. Nothing is uh, in, in western Marxist framework, nothing is natural, nothing is given, nothing is fixed, everything is ever changing. Through what? Through not structure, but human action. This, this concept of reification links in, uh, into some of Marx's discussion on what is translated into English as alienation, but it does not give economic uh, production interaction with external nature the same central role it has in much of Marx's writing. Okay? In, in western Marxism then what appear as structures as uh, are simply the products of human action in contradistinction with structural religion. Okay. For, for, uh, for structuralists, okay, what appears as human agencies, what appears to us as human agencies okay, are simply the products of structures, that is why it is relational. Okay. In, 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 in western Marxism, what appear as structures as, uh, are simply the products of human action or even more simply a form of human action which has taken on a life of its own and, and now appears quasi natural. Let me give you some example. Uh, suppose certain institutions they appear to us as very much natural given fixed universal eternal and so, and so on. Okay? Namely the state, religion, market and so on. Why I am giving you these these three things because um, when I say state, I mean it's a political institution. Uh, when I say religion, it may be a social, cultural, and religious institution. Market refers to an economic institution. Okay, they may appear to us as universal or eternal social forms, social realities, but they are not. The state also changes, religion also changes, uh, market also changes. The kind of market, the kind of religion, the kind of uh, religious practices, the kind of the state that we witnessed 100 years back, they are no longer there. And what do we witness today, the kind of state, the forms of state, the forms of religion, the forms of religious practices, uh, the, 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 the forms of religious practice the, the, and, and also the, the forms of state, they are also not going to be there after 50, 100 years. They are ever changing, they are not static categories. Okay? That is why they only appear to us as universal, fixed, given, natural, eternal and so on, but actually they are not, they do just appear to us as quasi natural or natural. Okay? In this sense, if they are partial, then, then what about the totality or holism, if they are partial, okay? then, then a term which is sometimes used to characterize this view of society is that of expressive totality. Okay? What is that expressive totality? I mean the social whole, the totality is seen simply as 
as the self expression of the social subject a self expression and self creation which we only partially recognize as such okay within a marxist framework okay within within a marxist framework the force of the word expressive okay if you if you if you uh, uh, look at this e expressive okay this term within a uh, uh, within a marxist framework the force of the word expressive comes from the implication that lukacs in particular does not recognize the importance of material needs and interaction with nature in this process so that the self creation of society is, is instrumental rather than expressive this point could however uh, equally be directed at gramsci for example whose 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 uh, complete subordination of the natural world to the social okay social relations of production okay leads to the implication that needs are not just socially defined but in fact socially created uh, for for althusser suppose what we discussed in 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 structuralism that who of course throws the notion of human needs out of court or even in some slightly uh, convoluted arguments at at marx uh, the the uh, arc materialist this is not this is not just um, a problem with of course marxism uh, given that that pure biological needs are never manifested directly in humans human beings but are always i mean these these pure biological needs are always articulated in a social context and given a socially meaningful form the the argument that we can disentangle, disentangle uh, pure biological needs uh, from the social form uh, uh, from the social uh, uh, constitute um, or 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 uh, from the social form they always um, uh, take is a problematic one uh, 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 of course it's a it's a necessary one uh, although it is a necessary one okay now now then if we if we just look at um, look at uh, uh, these discourses okay um, what we come to know that that uh, uh, we have we have, uh, uh, we have we are trying to recapitulate uh, whatever we have discussed today in this lecture um, that we we started with uh, western marxist uh, i mean the module of of on on western marxism or western marxist perspectives on 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 critical modernist paradigm in sociology uh, and there we 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 try to encapsulate capture uh, uh, the def, uh, the the meaning of western marxism though there are certain differences uh, uh, and and the differences between structuralism and western marxism um, we have discussed we have i mean in the through the works of lukacs uh, and gramsci particularly turen will 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 come a little while later in the next lecture okay and we have we have discussed the similarity between between uh, lukacs uh, and gramsci uh, lukacs was very much engaged in 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 um, in the hungarian revolution of 1919 whereas gramsci was very much involved in in, uh, in the um, workers council movement during Uh, the turin strikes of the uh, turin strikes in italy okay mm. and and turin of course was very much engaged uh, in uh, was very much uh, um, investigating the experience of car workers at renault in the 1950s he was involved with the students movements in the in 1968 and also engaged in the anti nuclear movement in france thus there is a common thread of involvement with social movements and the refusal to separate theory from pra practice with all these three thinkers okay then we we have discussed the differences between structuralism and marxism uh, against the backdrop of of the concept of totality okay okay and uh, then we have discussed reification and alienation i mean reification refers to the process where the result of our actions appear to us uh, uh, as a quasi natural thing 
because we do not uh, recognize its social origins or the process of confer, uh, process of creation uh, that goes into its uh, formation. Okay, and and this concept of reification uh, is related uh, uh, to some of Marx's uh, uh, discussion on what is translated into English as. Uh, alienation or human alienation we have discussed. We have also discussed that how uh, uh, the concept of reification of course, uh, I mean uh, the concept of alienation of course, gives uh, primacy to economic production, uh, interaction with external nature uh, and so on. Whereas, whereas reification of course, does not give, give economic production, interaction with external nature. Um, and so on the central role it has in much of Marx's writing. Okay. In, in western Marxism then what appear as structures are simply the products of human action or human agency or even more simply a form of human action which has taken on a life of its own and now appears quasi nat natural that is why I said uh, nothing is uh, natural given or fixed or universal or eternal in the western Marxist tradition in the western Marxist theoretical trajectory. Okay. That is why I gave you uh, the examples of state, religion and market and so on. Then we have discussed expressive totality. Um, okay. uh, um, I mean the social whole, uh, the totality is often seen uh, simply as the self expression of the social subject, not only the self expression of the social subject, uh, but also a self expression and self creation, which can only, uh, which we can only partially recognize as such. Okay. Uh, and in this and, uh, and, and, uh, and within, within we have what we have also discussed, uh, how within a Marxist framework, the force of the word expressive comes from the, 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 the implication that Lukacs in particular does not recognize the importance of material needs and interaction with nature in this process. So, that the, the, the self creation of society is instrumental rather than expressive. This point uh, uh, could however, uh, uh, equally be directed at Gramsci whose complete subordination of the natural world to the social leads to the implication that needs are not just socially defined, but in fact socially created. And 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 uh, in the in the next lecture, we are going to discuss um, um, uh, social movements uh, and reflexivity and rationality within social movements. We are going to discuss human agency, class agency, and class conflicts, uh, class consciousness, class organization. I mean hegemony, okay, knowledge and action in social movements and in reflexivity and rationality we are going to discuss self creation, self knowledge and modernity, I mean the historicity part and and absolutist uh, and, and absolute historicism. Okay. Uh, thank you.